Foodpolicy.us is pleased to present this educational series highlighting issues and debates in our food system. Join us each week as we hear from leaders and innovators around the table. I mean, I come out of a bit of a background of, of commodities, starting at helping to start the Chicago Climate Exchange. Um, and so that was the original idea. Why can't we just use futures markets for organic commodities? Um, we, we found a couple of things. One is um, some of these markets are a little too small right now to, um, to support a, a liquid futures market. What we're really trying to get at is, is price dissemination, um, information for decision making. Um, do we really need a, a, a fully fledged futures market? And the answer was actually no. Um, there's just basic building blocks of, of information, whether it's uh, daily prices or whether it's uh, acreage under production or you know imports and exports into the U.S. of these of these commodities. Basic information that's just not available in a timely way for for producers and consumers and everyone in between. Um, a couple of difficulties arise when you, when you have this situation. It, it just can be very hard to do business um, when, when you don't have this. So to give you an example, I talked to a couple of different uh, organic poultry producers and they, um, they wanted to see, one of them was trying to get a loan from, from his bank. He wanted to build a new barn, increase the size of his flock. And the banker said, okay, what, are, what is your cost structure? And the biggest cost for, for a poultry producer is, is feed. And there was no way he could give him a signal as to what organic chicken feed was going to cost over the next year or so. Um, and it doesn't just mirror the, the conventional market. You can't just say, well, you know, corn is trading on the Chicago Board of Trade for X, and so that's what we think um, organic feed is. It, it actually does vary independent of the conventional uh, price. So, you know, he's, as a result, he's having trouble getting credit uh, for something like expanding his business. Or you can take the, um, the USDA crop insurance program, where because there's no good data on price, it's hard to compensate producers in the case of a crop loss for the value of their crop. So right now they pay, a, on most commodities, they pay a 5% premium to get that insurance, and if they lose their crop, they're getting compensated at conventional levels. So these are all deterrents for people getting into organic production or staying in organic production. And ironically, with commodity prices as high as they are right now, uh, it makes it even tougher. If you know you can make a nice living on with $7 conventional corn, you know, why should you subject yourself to the extra risk and hassle and, 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 and difficulty of, of uh, organic production when you can do quite well in conventional? So that was the, the, where the need for a service like Mercaris arose from. 